hi everyone welcome back to my channel if you are joining year two of the course then it's a welcome back and I hope your exams went well and you're ready for year two of your course um, and for those people that are new here welcome to you also I hope these videos are useful for helping you with any assessments or general understanding of the practical part of the course. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to make sure you're up to date with any new content. I will be putting out videos at least once a week, especially now that we're getting closer to the start of your course and people are trying to get ready. I want to put out as much useful content as possible and also I'd like to put out some theory base videos as well to help you there as well. So to start with I've decided to start with uh, paper two which this is the winter 2021 exam and um, so as always we'll start with our evidence document and make sure that you have your source files put into a folder where you have everything accessible and you can save all your new work there that's really important to start with. So the evidence document, it says to open n2102evidence.rtf and you need to put your details on every page. So that means we have to put our details in the header or the footer and by details they mean your name, centre number and candidate number. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. Our evidence document is here. So what you do is you double click in the header and what I normally do is I go to, as soon as you open the the header you'll be given the design pane like this so I normally go to header and I put in a three part header and then I just type my details into each of the placeholders these are called placeholders so I'm just using a false candidate number and a false center number and that's it and then you click off and then that will automatically be on every page of your evidence just to note here at the beginning, I will remind you of this in other videos, don't worry about the length of your evidence document. The key thing is to make sure that your evidence is clear and easy to read and it shows the evidence that it's supposed to show. That's really important. All right, let's move on to the next part. So it now says that we need to save our document with um, the same file name that it has followed by our candidate number. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So we go to file and we go to save as and you want to make sure this is in your folder. So I'm going to call this and save. You can change the format here to a Word document. Next thing we need to do is we're going to be working on task two now, which is the document itself. So it says you're going to edit a newsletter. A corporate house star must be used. Three paragraph styles have already been created. An additional paragraph style must be created and applied to the document as instructed. So you're already given a little bit of information about what you're going to do. So it says we need to open our file, which is n2102vetnews.rtf. And it says the page setup is set to eight or portrait with a two centimeter margins. Do not make any changes to those settings. So we don't need to change those. It said to save the document in the work area in the format of the software you are using. So we're going to save it as a Word document with the file name newsletter like this. And then it says we need to place in our evidence document a screenshot to show this file has been saved. Make sure there is evidence of the file type. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So here is our document. So we don't need to make any changes to it as yet. We just need to save it. So I've just gone to file and save as, and we're going to save it in our source files folder with the file name newsletter in uppercase. That's what we've been told to use. And we need to save it as a Word document because we're using Word software. So it said to save it in the same format. If I open up this pane, you can see it's, it says Microsoft Word document. So we could also use a snipping tool and we could take a screenshot here showing that we've saved it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is step two and it says place in the header automated page, page number center aligned and then it says put in the footer the text edited by followed by a space and your name 
center number and candidate number right aligned. You've got to make sure all the alignments match the page margins and no other text or placeholders are included in the header or footer areas. Headers and footers should be displayed on all pages. So we'll go ahead and we'll go into our document. So if we open the header again and we go to header and we could do page number actually because we're only putting the page number at the top. So that's there now. And then we need to go down to the footer and we need to put in now footer. Here we go. And I'm going to use my three columned one again. And I'm going to use this one here. So edited by colon space. And I'm going to put in it was the center number first and the candidate number after. And you've got to remove the placeholders. That was one of the instructions that you were given. And that's it. So you should be right aligned. You need to check that your uh, what you've put matches the margins. So you just click there on this little triangle here on the margins. Make sure your rulers are showing. So if you go into view and you make sure the ruler is ticked, then you will be able to check that so I would advise you to open the ruler before you begin so you can check all your alignments and then the page number should be in the center which it is and we've got the details on the two pages that we currently have so that's everything there you want to make sure you save so I'm just going to press Control s please make sure you're saving your work as you go now it says create and store the following style basing on the default paragraph style so we need to create a style called VE subhead and it's center with font size 14 center bold italic single line spacing no space before the paragraph but a six point space after the paragraph and then it says we must put in a screenshot of our evidence document to show the settings we have defined for that style and make sure the style is based on the default paragraph style which I'll show you how to do now we need to go into so in the home tab and you'll see the styles section of the tab if you click on this little jump out icon here and we're going to create a new style so we click on this icon and it's called VE I just want to make sure I've got the spelling exactly right VE dash no space subhead like that and it's based on the paragraph style as you can see here and we want to put in sans serif i always use arial it's just quick and easy it should be 14 bold italic center aligned and we need to put in the line spacing and the six point after so if we go to format and go to paragraph and the points before should be zero and the point after should be six and the line spacing should be single so that's okay as what we've done so far so that's all of those changes there okay so we're gonna so I've just checked through to make sure everything's as it should be so you obviously want to make sure you double check before you take your screenshot and then I'm gonna go ahead and use the snipping tool and I'm gonna snip this whole pane out and then I'm gonna put that in my evidence and paste that there. You'll notice with the snipping tool, your evidences will be quite big, um, which, like I said, is perfectly fine, as long as they're easy to read. You can make them a bit smaller if you want. I've just got step one and step three there, nice and clear. And I'm gonna save my evidence now as well. So step four, it says the document style name, VE-Body, has already been created, stored, and applied to the body text in the document. Modify the VE body style, so only the following formatting is applied. So it should have the style name VE body, it should be serif, 11, justified, have no enhancements, a 1.5 line space, line spacing, and no spaces before a paragraph, but a six point space after. So we, I need to go in and check 
that that style matches these specifications so let's have a look it's called ve body so it's here so i've left this styles pane open and if you go to this little tab here you click modify and it will bring up the details for the style so the name is correct it is a serif font so serif font 11 no enhancements which it doesn't have it should be justified it should be a 1.5 line space so at the moment it's a single line space so if we click here that's now changed to 1.5 lines and it should have a six point space after a paragraph so we go to format paragraph again before should be zero and after should be six so that's that okay for step five it says at the start of the document and above the subtitle quarterly newsletter enter the title vocational education and training so i've got to go ahead and put that in and then it says that we need to modify VE title star. So I'll go ahead and put the heading in first. So I've gone ahead and closed the styles pane. And I need to put my cursor here because I'm going to put my heading right at the top. Now, because I'm working from the question paper that's online, I've just copied and pasted. Obviously, you have to type it straight in. So that's that. And I'm going to go ahead and save that for now. And then I'm going to open again my styles pane because I need to edit another style so this is VE title the one we're going to change so that's here so let's just scroll down and I'm going to go as you know to modify and I will update the changes so it's sans serif so I've changed it to Arial it's 22 and it's bold it's not underlined but it's bold and italic so I've got to remove the underline and put bold and italic it's center aligned and it's single line spacing so i've just made those changes now and there are no spaces after the paragraph so they should all be zero but as i can see here there's a space after of 12 points so i need to change that so i've gone into format and paragraph and i'll just remove that space so that's now set where well, it's been removed so we know that's set to zero and according to the question paper, I need to take a screenshot of this. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll use my snipping tool and I'll screenshot it and put it in the evidence folder. So I've gone ahead and put that under step six, as you can see. And we'll move on to the next part of the question. Okay, it says to apply the amended VE title style to the text entered in step five. So that's our title. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So here is our title, so you just select it, and then here is our title star, so that's now formatted like that. And I'm going to save this again, and then go back to my question paper. So it says for step 8, select the subheading, Apprenticeship Update, and the following text, up to and including the paragraph ending can benefit business. And it says we need to change that text. Um, of the page layout so that this text is displayed as two columns of equal width with a one centimeter space between them so we need to go ahead and have a look and find that so i've already got the navigation open but if you don't you just press ctrl f and your navigation will open i would recommend using this because it helps you to find things easily so i've just put in apprenticeship update which is the text that we need to use until can benefit business was the last bit. So when you've selected the text that you were supposed to, we now need to go to layout and we need to change this into, if we go to columns and more columns, it should be two columns and the spacing should be one centimeter only. So I'll just do that. And so if we check, that's now made that into, that majority of that text is now two columns, which we were asked to do. So I'll save that now and I will go back to the question paper. 
Okay, so now we need to apply dash style bullets to the text from construction and building to transportation and logics. So I'm going to again use the find function to find that text and I've got to make sure that the bullets are aligned to the left margin. The list is in single line space and with no space between the lines and there is a six point space after the last item in the list. So let's have a look. So I found the text here, construction and building to transportation and logics. You want to select your bulleted list and if you go to the home tab and bullets click on the small drop down there and if you don't have the dash already there you go to define new bullet and then it will open this and if you go to symbol you then have the option to scroll through and here's the dash that I've used but you have a range of symbols um, that you can use so that's how you would find it and then you just press OK and OK and then now we need to change the alignment and the line spacing so we keep the bulleted list selected and if we pull out this paragraph settings pane here we need to make sure it's it is aligned to the left but there's an indentation so we want to remove the indentation so it's aligned directly to the left so it should have a zero centimeter space and it's single line spacing and there should be a six point space after the paragraph so that's correct so then it should look like this and so now it's aligned to that left margin like the text and there's a single line space after single line spacing from the text so that's that i'm going to go ahead and save that now next question is step 10 it says identify the four subheadings in the document and apply the ve subhead style to each one so I've made my document a bit smaller just so it's easy for me to see the whole document. So there's the first one. And then I'm going to hold down the control button and select the other one. So that's basic skills. There's this one, vocational world championships. And I just need to look for the last one because there should be four, which is here, apprenticeships campaign. So just select all of those and we format those with the VE subhead style. So that's that there. So again, I'm going to save. Now it says that we need to use the data in the n2102starts.csv file and create a pie chart to compare each level for the year 2019 to 2020 only. So we're going to create a chart using a document n2102 starts from our source files folder. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened the document and I've just had a quick examination of it so I can see there are different levels, three levels and then there's an overall total here in cell A6 and then we have different years, 2016 going on and this is the year that we're using. So first thing we want to do is select those three uh, levels uh, for 2019 to 2020 and then we're going to go to insert and we're going to create a simple pie chart. So that's our pie chart for the three years there at the moment. Now we're going to have to make some changes to this as per the question. And we'll have a look at that now. So it says that we should format the chart to display the title Apprenticeship Starts 2019 to 2020. Okay, so in our question paper, it says to format the chart with uh, the set, each sector only the level and percentage sector label so we need to show the level name and the percentage so before we can do that we need to go ahead and we need to change our labels here we're going to remove the legends in a minute but we need to change this because at the moment it's set to one two three because we didn't select the levels when we created the chart we only selected the data itself so I'm going to tell Excel that these values here should be shown as the levels and then that will show up on our pie chart and you'll see in a minute so we need to go to select data and then you'll see where it says one two three over here so that's what we're changing so we press edit and we select the levels here and you can see they've already changed and press ok and they're now changed. So now when we go to remove the legends and label only the sector parts, 
they will show up as they should they won't be numbers anymore okay so what we're going to do now now we've got our levels there as they should be we're going to add in our data labels so if you click on this plus sign here and then click on data labels so that we have some data there it's the wrong data at the moment but we're going to change it and then click on the data itself the numbers and they're selected now and if you right click on one of those format data labels and then it brings up this pane that shows you you can now add the percentage in so the percentage is there and the category name which is what we need we don't need the values so we remove those so now you've got higher level and you've got the percentage and all the levels are there as they should be so we can close that we don't need the legend so we can remove that from there and we need to add the title in as well so I've gone ahead and added the label in the title in there so that's everything that we need from there and we're going to now copy this and put this into our document so I'm just going to read where that needs to go so it says to put the chart after the paragraph ending outnumbered those at the immediate level and make sure that the chart and all data fits within the column width so we're going to go ahead and do that now um, and I found the text so it's after this paragraph so I'm just going to go ahead and put the chart in there and you want to make sure using your ruler settings that it fits within the column width which it does as you can see so that's that so I'm going to go ahead and save that so now it says we need to import the image n2102 transfer.jpg and place it in the paragraph beginning the vocational skills and then we need to do some things that's so we need to rotate the image 180 degrees and format the image so that it's resized to a width of three centimeters with the aspect ratio maintained text should wrap around the image and it is aligned to the left of the column and to the top of the paragraph started the vocational skill so the first thing we need to do is find the text the vocational skills so again i'm going to go into here and look for that the vocational skills so it goes here and this text should actually be formatted correctly so I'll just do that. so it should go at the start here so if I put my cursor right at the beginning and then go to insert image or pictures sorry so you want to find your folder with your source files in and then this is the only image in there so it comes up pretty easily and you just press insert and now we need to do the formatting to this so and go to size and position then we have some options in here so we need to rotate the image 180 degrees so I'm just gonna type that in so that's the first thing and then the width we need to keep the aspect ratio locked and it says that we need to resize the image to a width of three centimeters with the aspect ratio locked and the text should wrap around the image and it should be aligned to the left of the column and the top of the paragraph that it's in so we'll go ahead and do that now so it should be a width of three centimeters and then we need to so we've locked the aspect ratio we've done the rotation and then we need to text wrap we can do that here so it should be square as well and then so here we go so it should be to the left margin and the top of the paragraph which it is already so that's how it should look when you've done it I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit more clearly and I'm going to save that and move on to step the next step so step 15 now it says format only the paragraph that starts 100, the 46th word skills competition so that the text is indented by one centimeter from both the left and right hand margins. It displays an external three to four point black border and it has a light gray of 10 to 25% background fill. So I'm going to go ahead and open the document. So again, I've used the control F function to find the text and it's here. So I'm just going to select it. I need to go into the home tab and on the paragraph pane you have the borders button here and if we go down to borders and shading now we want to make sure this says apply to paragraph first and then we want a boxed border so a border going around it the style is fine 
it's black and we want to make sure it's three to four points and then we need to go into shading because we need to fill that paragraph with a 10 to 25 percent gray color so let's go for, i'm going to go for 15. so the text is still clear and press ok so now that's got the line around it and it's filled with the gray color that we've been asked and we also need to indent this as well by um, one centimeter either side of the text so I'm going to select that so when you select the paragraph if you right click on your paragraph and go to paragraph and then you want to change your indentation on the left and the right margins because that's what we were asked to do to one centimeter so they should both be one centimeter left and right and then now that has made that indented correctly as it should be so I'm just going to go ahead and save that okay we're at the end almost at the end so the last thing we need to do is our final checks spell check and um, so you can use f7 to run the spell check in word and you also need to proofread the document so you're looking for things like repeated words or um, things like some of the grammatical errors that might not be picked up by the spell check and then you also need to make sure that the list chart and paragraph with the outside border are not split over columns or pages there are no widows or orphans so that's stray words at the beginning or end of a paragraph so they should be together with the paragraph if necessary you might need to move the paragraph so that it's with all the words that are part of it there should be no blank pages all the styles should be applied consistently so you saw me change some of the body text that wasn't consistently styled so you should make sure you've done that and spacing is consistent between all items then you've got to save using the same uh, file name and format using step one and print out so i'm going to go ahead and check all of those things now so first thing i'm going to do is run the spell check so you go to review and spelling and grammar and then we will go through and check all of that um, I'm going to ignore a lot of the hyphenated words and some of the punctuation we can change as well so you just need to go through and check this as you go so I've come to words world skills which is the name of an organization now names I wouldn't change um, so I'm going to ignore all there and I'm going to ignore because it's trying to make me change to American spelling for organization. So that's not going to change. And then, and then the spelling check is complete. So now I need to proofread. I've already proofread it and made sure that there are no um, double words and things like that. So now I need to check it for consistency in terms of formatting paragraph styles. I need to make sure all everything is aligned into the margins, which I'm doing as I'm talking to you. And I also want to make sure there's no widows and orphans as well. So here, my image for some reason, the formatting on it has changed. So I need to check that. So for some reason that's happened. So these are the kind of things that can happen. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. So I've gone ahead and fixed that. Where I might have undone something throughout the question paper, I might have undone the formatting on the picture, but this is the whole point of doing the checking. I wanted to keep that in the video just to let you know, just so you can see and demonstrate that things can undo and all that kind of thing. So you do need to check and make sure that everything is as it should be. So that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And obviously you would then print your document as you've been instructed. But that's it. So I hope you find this video useful. Please let me know if there's any other content that you're particularly interested in. I'm really happy um, to do any videos based on the content you want within the course, of course. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video if it was useful. And send me a comment um, letting me know what you think. Okay, I will see you next time.